Combe, get away! <laughs> Stay to the end, find out what you gotta do. As we know, I am a horrible camper and I always find myself getting an Airbnb. Mostly because I don't have a 12 volt system. GoBlock's been getting me through till now. Thank you, Red Ark, for that. Worth its weight in gold. But it's time to get serious, so we're going Red Vision. I spoke about it when we revealed the cruiser. Very lucky, he's got exactly... Actually, is your system even better than what I've got? Very similar, probably a smaller battery, but I'm fitting it in a tighter area. So very similar to what I've got in my canopy, but it's going into behind your seat. And I'm gonna put my control panel slightly different spot to where most people put it, so. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Quite a difference, one would say. You're right, there's a lot less space. Sure, the wizard, you, will get it done. <laughs> and then we'll be camp ready. I'll be a Tura. I designed this really well, like, to get up here and get stuff down super easy. Not hard at all, or dangerous. Where is all oh, my 12 up gear? Up in my little cubby hole up here. Oh, hey cars. Red Arc Lithium, yep, boo boo. I bought most of this gear, geez, when I bought the cruiser, so it's been sitting around for like a year. So we got some lights, some, these are gonna be like some side lights, some switches for inside the car. Oh, a heap of wiring and stuff from Rome Gear down at the Gold Coast, good old Jazzy, thanks mate. The main thing in the bobbies, the Red Arc gear. So the Red Arc gear is the stuff I bought ages ago. So I've gone for the Manager 30 and the Red Vision. So I haven't even, well maybe I have opened this stuff, but I did because I've got a secret, secret method of how I'm gonna mount these things. Anyway, this is what you would typically find it in the back of say a canopy like TJ's. TJ's is running it and it's been working for him seamlessly. I have a different plan for it. I'll also be finishing my interior, not only with some PBS bits, eight speed auto consoles, I'm also changing the shifter. In line with that, I'll be mounting the Red Vision control panel screen and that screen is what's gonna control pretty much everything on the car. I wanna bodies, I wanna control side lights, I wanna control fridges. Hopefully it fits, but this. So our good buddy Dan at Metamorphic Laser has created this panel that's gonna fit behind my seat. It's even got a little Shed Life bloody logo clamp. So that's gonna clamp the battery behind the seat and use up that space that's good for nothing. 60 amp hour Red Arc, there's slimline, so it's gonna go behind the seat. It's, uh, it's only 60 amp hour because it's thin and small to fit. Um, I'm not running a big power system. I'm not using inverters and things like that, so it's enough. Uh, we're also gonna do some stereo, because I'm sick of the bloody four inch little speaker things in the front. Let's get stuck in, all right, let's just start rip tear busting. I look real professional and stuff, but I'm really not, like, this is just a bloody random frame. Don't let that, uh, don't, don't let this stuff fool ya. <laughs> One more thing I forgot. All this stuff is available at Outback Equipment with TJ's discount code, TJ Jack 5 So any red up gear and all that jazz, get in, get it. Time to start stripping things out. Ooh, twisties. Ah, TJ's here. Want some twisties? I found twisties in them. <laughs> My cameraman's back. <laughs> what the hell? Please, <laughs> stare. What is the music? Stare, that stare is legit just turned on when I opened the seat. Anyway, because I've got to pull the seat out because this is where everything's going. Shed life banner, heaps of straps, winch remote, Yui Boom, black beer. I'm never going to drink a black beer. How did that even get in? Got the Queensland refo. Need that. <laughs> you guys are caught on to the fact that I've got it. I'm always on the UHF, and everyone's like, where the hell's your area? It lives behind the back seat and it still works. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I wasn't really sure where I was gonna be running cables and things. So I'm just gonna drill some holes for cable ties, basically, just to hold the cables to the panel. <laughs> For those who don't know, I used to be a Sparky. I used to build elevators. You guys on the channel that weren't aware of that. So, I'm kind of back in my domain now. This bit of awesomeness here gets rid of these relays. That's a relay. Requires four wires. This just requires two because all the relay system is inside here. It's all computer controlled via this. It's very smart. That's the brain. 
Now, Sparky's don't need instructions. Nah, we're, uh, we're, we're gravy, so I'm just gonna get stuck straight into her. They okay, won't see me over here. Gravy. Oh, you can actually control it with your phone too. That's, that's pretty cool. See that, hey. Just a sick idea is to write down everything you're gonna be wiring and tick it off as you go. That way you can finish your wiring in one hit and you don't have to worry about trying to add things again later. Fridge power times two, so I'm gonna have a fridge, my normal chest fridge in there. I'm gonna have a drawer fridge in the back. Tub lights, I'm gonna have two or three, maybe one each side, one at the back. The undercar lights. Power in the tent, that's gonna be sick for charging phones and the light that's already in there. Compressors, or one compressor. I believe the TMS thing can do the water level as well. One man, no worries. Bang your bloody crimper in the uh, vice. And away you go. Bloody ripper. This is just one of them little hydraulic ones that are pretty good. Crimp away. Uh, go ahead, complement it with a little bit of a little bit of heat shrink. Bloody lovely thing, isn't it? You ever gotta like design a plate or a bracket? It's a lot easier to make it out of cardboard than transfer it to steel. So I'm gonna try and make up couple of um, brackets. One's gonna hold the aerial on the other side and this one's just gonna hold like a little side light so you can have light out to the side if this is like your campground sort of thing. I'll have one each side so you can switch them individually. It's a uh, light force, bloody flood utility light. Got a nice plug on it already. Oh, that's cool. So it's obviously, so you wanna check your bracketry first. You could just go and mount it straight to that but don't want to do that because of my torno. So I kinda wanna come out from underneath the torno, then have a bracket for that to sit on. It's gonna bolt through there on, on the inside. This will fold down. And that's gonna be the mount for my light. So on the other side, I'm gonna incorporate the light and the uh, GME aerial thing. But, uh, so we had a bit of a test fit when TJ was here. So I've wired all of the output to the TVMS. Tim, what is it? TVMS system. I basically got all my cable lengths. I labeled each cable and I pre-wired it all in to the board just because it's easier to just now mount that, run the cables out and fit them off. A little tip you might notice I've done here is put a bit of split conduit just around these edges where there's potential for, for cables to rub. Um, over here, I would have liked to use a bush normally, like a rubber bush. I didn't have a hole saw at the time, more of a bush. So I drilled a big hole and I put some heat shrink over it, triple insulated then, plus it's only an earth anyway, so I'm not too phased. Cable protection is a big thing, guys. That's what um, it's what causes fires. So don't want arcing of positives to, to metal. It will burn your car down. If you don't have split conduit to put over like metal edges or bushes or things. You can also use some of the insulation. So strip back the insulation, put a slice in it and Cable tie that around the sharp metal, that also works. Oh, also use the correct size cabling. That's a huge one too. You're better off going bigger than smaller of what you need. They're all real short runs. So if you get a long run, you're gonna need to go a bigger cable. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. Cable selection, fuse selection, and protecting your cables. That's uh, three three main rules. Oh, Mac, hell blister, he's back at it. Ah, oh, blister. Come around for the good bit now, all the hard work's done. Let's uh, throw it in and. Back to the old glory shot again, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Car builders. <laughs> so we already did all this. You guys would have seen back on the episode when we painted the truck black. Oh. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. Well, then I can put the sub over there. Sweet sub woofer. Because ah. uh, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, why'd you only go 60 amp hour? Because I want it behind the seat, you could definitely put another one over there. Yeah. But at the time, I didn't want to spend any more money, so. <laughs> and, uh, so we've got one, but it's good for 85 amps. So possibly two fridges, few lights, compressor. It's not some super touring one, but it's pretty good. And I can also plug solar into it, which I'm not going to, because I'm never stationary that long. What do you think of it? I'm not bad. Not too bad. Oh yeah, Dan did a, did a good job of that, did he? 
Now we start running some things. Well, the reason that I'm pulling the whole interior out, minus the driver's seat, is because one, I'm changing the center console, it's just gonna be easier, but two, I'm running all the amp wiring, power wiring, I like to run it, this stuff, through the car. You're going through the firewall hole up high, keeps everything sort of away from water and stuff. That's just my preference. If you, if you wanna punch a hole and seal it up real nice, and that's that's a great idea too, like run along the chassis, sweet. But it's just a entirely preference. So I'm going through the car. Oh, I finally find out what these are for. Yeah. It's for servicing your jack. This is a sad moment. Had so many good times together. Remember the time. Gonna miss sharing a beer with you, mate. The uh, MTX four channel amp there. Just went and picked up a four channel wiring kit, a power splitter, so it goes in one, comes out two. It just makes the wiring neat, simple, easy. I've worked out my power, and the eight gauge is going to be fine for that. Got some fuses, speaker wire for the plug going into my tent for tent power. Mac with wiring tips when running cables through rubber grommets. Obviously, try and get it as thin as you can. But spray some tie shine on there, WD or something like that, soapy water, and it'll straight in. These are the MTX splits that I'll be putting in the front. Then I got the six inch. Man, I got parts everywhere at the moment. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. And I haven't even got the PBS stuff here yet. Uh, MTX are doing a discount code for you guys. So 10% off, I believe it is. Shed Life as the code on uh, MTX Australia. Discount code Shed Life if anyone wants some audio gear from them. Well, I'm just excited to have stereo system that's not two little four inch speakers at the front. Okay, while well, I remember, I've had a heap of guys ask me how, how heavy this thing is and the easiest way to show you that it's roughly, I don't know, like 60 kilos is to show me and Jacko um, putting it on the other day. It was gonna be a Morton episode and we sort of forgot. This is something I've wanted for a very long time. I, someone put me onto them. I put a post up on Instagram and I said, who sells hard shell small rooftop tents? So like 1500 max long. Yeah, got in touch with the Outback Tourer boys and I had a look at it and I went, mate, that's exactly what I need. It's perfect. We put it on the wrong way, haven't we? Nah. <laughs> no, we're gravy. Let me pull it. Ah, oh, that's it. I didn't make that look very good, did I? <laughs> I was also going to show you guys how it's mounted because I get asked a lot. I just, I haven't taken the brackets back off to get them powder coated. So that's why I haven't really shown a whole lot. But but it's basically, we welded up these brackets uh, back on this other episode, getting ready for Tassie with uh, Brock, the mullet man himself. This system worked for the cruiser. It might not work for everything else. So here it is anyway. Folded up this bracket. We've got bolts at the top, bolts at the bottom. Same up there, and then just welded some box section to it. We made those legs for TJ's nav forever ago, and then I used them in the Ranger, and now I'm using them in the Cruiser. And for some reason, they just seem to keep working, <laughs> so it's very, uh, very handy. This tent's from Outback Tourers, called the 1.5 rooftop tent. It also comes with these roof racks. I don't know about opening it with the spare tire on it or if you meant to put that on. I've been running it on there for a bit and it's fine, but the tire is only strapped. Thinking I might make it like a cool bolted bracket and maybe get another set of these racks and see if it will stay on when it's folded up. Be a cool little test, I think. Um, how good's having kids? Like, they, they like hang around other kids and then get sick and then make us sick. <laughs> I'm a bit bloody crook. Uh, thanks, young Zalia, for that one. But my PBS order has arrived, so I'm stoked. Uh, and I'm gonna push through it because I really wanna get some stuff in. 
Uh, I don't actually remember ordering this much stuff, so <laughs> Jamie did say uh, he had some extra presents for me, something I really needed, so judging by the size of the boxes, I've got an idea what it is, but, and I'm excited if it is what I think it is. It's a bloody bit of gear there, that's for sure. Okay, let's get it in. So far, I've done, I've run out all the speaker cables, I've mounted the tweeter here. Excuse my uh, flu voice. <laughs> Basically, you're gonna be disgusted. This is the only two speakers that cruisers come with. Two little four inch things there. I have mounted the MTX splitter. Splitter runs between the tweeter and the woofer and it basically just splits the sound so the high frequency and the low frequency sounds. Correct me if I'm wrong, but tweeters only want high frequency and the woofer is what wants the low frequency, the boof, 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 so. No stereo expert, but anything's gonna be better than the uh, four inch that that was in there. Oh, 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 big reveal, big reveal. That is sick. That's a serious bit of kit, look at all that. Dude, if that actually does cruise control, I'll be very impressed. I never had steering wheel controls. <laughs> oh, stop it. I was right. He's like, you need these. You're kidding. Sick. These are gonna look friggin' cool. Finally, the truck's getting proper blacked out. Oh, thanks, Jamie. You're a bloody legend, mate. This is a camera for, so it looks like a mirror, but it's actually got a forward-facing camera. And it also shows you what's behind you when you're, um, because like when you got canopies on me, I got my big tire at the back. You can't actually use this as a mirror. So it's got a camera that shows you what's behind you. That's freaking cool. And in front, the stylish has too. Oh, I'm stoked on that. Ha <laughs> ha, sick. Yeah, I forgot about these. G-Wagon satellites. These are gonna be sick. Ah, oh, cool. This is a new face plate, but it's got a wireless charger in here, so you just slip your phone in there and it charges your phone. Standard switch panel stuff, plus wireless charger, so that's wicked. We're entering the 20th century with the cruiser, who would've thought? These are black um, aircon rings, so that'll just stylish up the dash a bit. I've also got speaker pods coming and armrests from One Stone. One stone armrest coming because I needed more cup holders. For an easy sort of way to run your cables into your door, that is. Unplug the cable from inside, pull it back through. Sometimes you might have to go all the way through. We'll get it. We'll get it. Trust me. There we go. Okay. So then you have then you have your loom. What we can now do is cut that tape, run our cable through, retape it, poke it all back through, plug that in, and wire our speaker wiring. We got gauges to go in. Oh, that reminds me actually. What's the sick policy on uh, YouTubers? How many sick days do you get? There is no policy. You just take the day off if you're sick. All right, we get a bit closer. I've marked where my tweeter's gonna go. It sort of just fits under the Huey Dewey. So I'm gonna mount that up first. Get it all wide in, because I'm excited as that gauges. I've always wanted gauges. Gauge number one, we have boost and EGT. Oil pressure and uh, water temp. Very crucial, if you lose oil pressure, your engine dies. If your water temp's too high, your engine dies. If your boost is too high, your engine dies. Oh, and if your EGTs are too high, also your engine dies. Nine o'clock at night, I'm about to tap out. But gauges are mounted, loomed up all the wiring. I'm actually mega surprised how many cables there are, but EGT probes, this is the boost and, <coughs> this is the boost and EGT theme of Bob, like it runs into there and here's your boost sensor. There's a bit of a halfway intro, cause I'm better. I got proper dropped for a few days there from that flu. Man flu is a very serious condition. Uh, it should not be left untended. Yep, yeah, right, I'm back anyway. I'm gonna get stuck in. Other than that, I just want to say thanks for everyone's uh, patience with uh, getting the getting the rigs ready, you know, and built. Because as we all know, 80% of the trip is building the car and getting everything ready and your camp gear ready and all that. There's a lot of this stuff I've acquired over a fair period of time, but just haven't had the time to put it in. So we got one stone armrest because everyone loves to give you about not having cup holders. So we've got more. So I've now got two in the console. 
two in each arm. They're also available on PBS's store if you can't find them anywhere else. Obviously, we got to mount the speakers. These are from PBS as well. These actually look like Toyota should make them. No, that's a rear one. So now, take it back. There's six cup holders now. This is the same sub that we put in the N80 Hilux. It's got high level input, so you don't actually have to run RCAs. It packs a bit of punch for a little eight inch, and it's all I need to rock the baby to sleep, so. <laughs> Stop talking about it, Marco. Please do something, mate. Yeah, righto. <laughs>I made that look a little difficult cutting the hole out because I, I can't seem to find my bloody jigsaw but it actually looks pretty cool. Looks dead stock like it should come from potato like that. Well this is a bit exciting. It's not a last bit, speaker's the last bit, this will be a nice easy bit. It's console time. Under my cute little shifter. Comes with the eight speed conversion. So if you opt for the Beamer one, it's pretty cool setup. Cup holders, heaps of room for switches and thanks for Rome gear. Anderson plug and a USB. I'm gonna cut it into the back here. And then I've got twin USB outlets, three amps each. That's pretty freaking cool. And a spot to plug my rear fridge in. <laughs> whole new setup not having sticks and poles and it's how they should have come really it is literally how they should have come <laughs> drink your piccolo and change gears change gears and my piccolo ah <laughs> oh, just like once the steering wheel and the head unit and everything ah oh, it's just gonna feel like a whole nother car it's just gonna be really nice uh, keen keen to keen to get it back on the road get it all done okay this episode as per usual didn't go to plan old mac got sick my high, actually we're meant to be doing content with my highlight right now but everything's gone bad on that we've hit, uh, <laughs> we've hit some serious snags with the highlight hopefully next episode we're going to uh, show you more of that and uh, let you know how to actually win this king chrome kit yes so this 150 piece king chrome kit this is the one i use in my cruiser oh, no, <laughs> so anyway to win it don't leave a comment on our channel i mean you can do that too i'm not against that <laughs> um, Head on over to King Chrome's YouTube. Uh, links in the description. This video here, <laughs> episode seven of their side-by-side -side adventures that they go on. Leave a comment, Macca sent me here, or Macca and TJ sent me here, or Mac and TJ are the best. And they'll pick the winner, right? Eh? And they will pick the winner um, on possibly, probably one of their next episodes or a YouTube short. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, you have to be subscribed to them, subscribe to us, and that's it. That's the rules done. You can win yourself one of these bad boys. There'll be another episode on this. It's obviously not finished, but it's getting a whole makeover with the new headlights and all that. Uh, a few more sneaky mods, which uh, we'll show you in that episode. Yeah, one of the big ones is the head units that made of ours ended up working at Sony, and he's like, oh, we've got this new high-end range we wanna, want people to test out. And I was like, righto, swinger it. So we've got, cool to have another option for head units for these 79s. See how that goes, I'm, I'm excited about that one. Keen to see it finished, and I apologize I didn't get it done in time. Uh, I didn't see myself been bedridden for three days. Yeah, normally we like to make our videos start to finish one sort of thing. I don't like to split stuff up, but there's been a lot to go in this episode. So that's sort of a finishing off episode of the new Cruiser and it's uh, gonna be pretty special. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs>